Welcome to Red 5. Today we are in the Covent Garden in London. Jimmy? Yeah. What are we going to talk about? Oh, today we're going to look at one of the classic lenses in the Leica family, the 35mm Summilux Pre Aspherical. This is a very important lens, I think, because uh, there's a few reasons behind it. One, this lens has been in production for 35 years, since 1960 all the way to 1995. And second, it's probably one of the smallest 35mm uh, uh, 1.4 lenses around the world. Um, I think it still probably holds the record of being the smallest. I know uh, Voigtlander has done a kind of like a replica uh, model of it, but then um, this is still the original, so it's still the smallest lens by far. And third, uh, this lens I think is it's always being underappreciated by many photographers because uh, uh, Leica has produced so many stunning lenses throughout his, his histories, and uh, this, despite being the fastest at 1.4, is not being the sharpest or the most popular. Uh, to among Leica photographers. Uh, so I want to basically talk about this lens today because it, I think it means something to the Leica history and also to me because I, I love this lens. This is actually one of my favorite lenses. Yes, well, the design is definitely very old because um, uh, it's introduced in the 1960s. Original. Yes, original. First and, design. and it hasn't changed. <laughs> it hasn't changed for 35 years. It has several updates cosmetically, you know, like they changed the focusing knob from metal to plastic. The, uh, the appearance is, remains the same. Although there were two versions of this lens, mm -hmm. but they practically the same, um, it's just cosmetic changes. The 35mm Summilux build quality is very typical Leica, which means excellent. You know, you cannot really find any fault with it. It's fully metal built, not weather sealed, because none of the Leica M lenses are weather proof. So you have to bear that in mind. But having said that, you know, there are many journalists war photographers you know like uh, they have taken these lenses to hostile environment which means that they are fine in surviving really really bad situations and um, apart from metal and glass these things focus is very very smooth also very very typical Leica you know uh, uh, it's got brass innings so uh, you can you know like the more you use it the more loose it becomes and becomes very very smooth um, like any new Leica M lenses they will be quite stiff at first but you know, this being an old lens, and, and uh, you know, most of the copies you find these days will have a very smooth uh, focusing action because it's been used many times. Um, but yes, it's really awesome. I just love this lens uh, build quality because, you know, it's just scream like her everywhere for you. In terms of image, uh, because it's 1960 lens, so it does actually give you that very kind of vintage look. So, uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit of that, and then uh, it's great for film photography. So if you like shooting film, this is actually a very, very great film lens, um, and also black and white lens. This is actually a very good black and white. It's single coated. It's not multi multi coated, um, which means that you know multi coated usually. Very good at correction in uh, in terms of color discrepancies in different light wavelengths. So um, is this is lens? This lens is not designed for color photography, so to speak. 
it's okay, but it's not great for color photography uh, to a very technical uh, uh, aspect. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, it's, it's still okay, it still performs well. In the digital world, you can tone the colors yourself anyway. So it's not too much of a big deal. Um, but black and white is brilliant, this lens. The image quality of this 35mm Sami Lux is very interesting. The reason I'm saying it because um, it's based on the old design and it has the very famous um, Leica glow when you shoot at 1.4. Um, but having said that, this is a Marmite affair. People either love it or hate it. You know, uh, I personally like the Leica glow and it certainly helps with black and white film photography. Um, modern day digital photography may actually consider this as a defect and uh, in fact there's a, many, well, there's a lot of reason they actually do that deliberately because um, uh, you can actually superficially increase the film speed in the old days of course you don't have to do that now um, and also this lens actually equal if not outperform some of the more modern lenses when stopped down from 2.8 all the way to about f8 and this lens is incredibly sharp and even sharper than some of the modern uh, manufacturers lenses uh, I'm not joking because the, mouth, the, uh, the contrast very high the micro contrast sharpness the, is very detailed with, and also this lens has no distortion whatsoever which means that all the straight line remains straight there's no uh, software correction that you need to apply and it's just good out of the box which means that this is really a good optically designed lenses so you know if you don't believe me really should try it do you use this lens uh, during the um, weddings yes yeah, yeah yeah i do um i like this lens for weddings uh because it has that very soft character you know um, um uh, it first you know like for uh, a lot of uh, bridal portraits you know sometimes uh, it's especially more than digital cameras they're too sharp and then um, uh, it brings out a lot of defects in the uh, female's faces, which, you know, like, it's a general rule of thumb, you're trying to hide... Men's the, as well. Yeah, okay, yeah, men's as well, yeah. So <laughs> you, you try to hide a little bit of the, uh, the imperfections in the skin. Um, being a softer lens is, is actually helps. And then, um, and also because um, this lens being soft, when I say soft, it doesn't mean it loses sharpness. It's actually still very, very sharp. Um, so you kind of get the best of both worlds in a way, yes. Can we compare it to the um, powder? For me as no. a makeup artist, come on! <laughs> well, yes, it, it, For me as a makeup artist, if I finish my makeup yeah. by powder, it yeah. gives you like very smooth, very delicate um, effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And um, it's something matte. You, you cannot replace that, you know, you still need very good makeup, but this helps to kind of smoothen out, you know, any, any light sources. Because, um, it's still a lens, you know, it does, you know, your makeup will still make the skin look better. The lens will give you better gradient in terms of lighting fall off and things like that. So yeah, this, this lens will, in general is quite a good portrait lens despite being a 35mm. What's the name of the lens? This, the Leica 35mm Summilux pre-spherical or you can call it sphe spherical lens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would you like still recommend, um, recommend it? Yes, um, well yes and no actually depending on uh, what you shoot mm -hmm. uh, as a profession. Um, to me, this is still a very good lens when stopped down to a smaller aperture. You still get kind of outstanding image quality from this lens even to date. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you do a lot of landscape or when you do a lot of street photography, for instance, when you don't need to use it wide open that often, this lens is by far still one of the best out there, and certainly most you know still very compact. So it's really just great for travel. So because it's light and small and compact, mm -hmm. uh, very discreet. Um, I have a question. What about the portraits? For portrait, uh, yeah. Again, I think that uh, depending on whether you want to shoot. Uh, wide open uh, a lot you know you, if you want to separate your you know the subject to the background you want to separate them this lens is good for that uh, like any other one for lenses uh, but the only thing is like i mentioned about you know it has this softening effect or the like a glow um, so it's a a love or hate kind of thing you know like you have to try as a photographer to see whether you like that sort of look if you do that this is the lens for them if you don't 
because some modern photographers they like it very sharp very you know everything just pin sharp this lens is not for that type of photography this lens is more softer more gentle it's good for portrait yes uh, but depending on what sort of portrait as well like it's good for bridal stuff but it may not be suitable for like modern day portrait when people want to see more details and things like that and this lens certainly does not deliver that type of things i think this lens can give you more artistic effect yes yes that that is very true i think i think i should use the term artistic because uh, uh, this is more like an art lens you know you use it to create an effect that you don't want to spend like a lot of time in Photoshop for instance this lens will just naturally give you that effect so if you look at this lens try it out to see that sort of uh, images if that's kind of the look that you you're craving for your type of project that you're doing I think that this is really good or if you are a film photographer uh, especially black and white this lens is still I would rate it really high for that in that regards because um, uh, of the lower contrast characteristics of this lens it will give you so much more uh, value for money uh, compared to some of the modern lenses um, and like I said you know like it's still very compact so like if you take this on a film camera you take it for travel and for instance they are just great because it's you know it's just really really small and yeah it's just brilliant for that this thing is just super compact and let me take the lens hood out and you can see I can guarantee that this is still the smallest 35mm 1.4 lens in a full frame term. You can't find anything smaller. And, you know, like being so small, it means that it really suits the uh, very discreet shooting style, especially on an M body. If you could just look at the dimension of this, you know, like it's very well balanced, it's very tiny, it's a 1.4, you know, like it's just awesome for like kind of like all situation shooting because you have the flexibility of the light gathering capability of this lens and being so sharp which means you shoot in daylight you stop down to 2.8 or smaller you will find it very very handy and at 1.4 that means you can shoot low light despite the fact having that like a glow that i mentioned um uh, but like i said is it ha you can like, is it like a love and hate thing but if you like it this lens it really is the perfect 31 millimeter lens with no distortion super sharp it went stop down and has the 1.4 light gathering capability awesome stuff if you like our channel please subscribe us and if you want to see more product reviews please leave us a comment below let me know what you want to see let us know let us, let us know. know what you want to see you're never gonna learn it <laughs> <laughs> and we will come back to you. See you then. Bye. See you, bye. <laughs>